Welcome back to the Big Water Podcast. We're doing something a little different. You know, we're always kind of tweaking things a little bit. We are inside of a, not going to call it a dive hotel, but it's a fisherman's hotel. How about that? And we've got our new buddy, Katie Joe, with us down here, Crystal River, Homosassa, whatever you want to call it. How am I doing on the verbiage there? No, great. Excellent. Actually, it's Florida's Nature Coast. How about that? There you go. So we were out doing a little fishing with Katie Joe, and she's been down here for quite a while. And we want to talk about guiding being a woman and fishing like that's a big buzz thing we're gonna see how honest you get with us on that but um, so walk us through a little bit on you know how we even get there like you asked me how do you get into guiding right in the boat and so let's relive a little bit of that on camera and you know how did you get here you didn't start guiding at 18 or anything like i did right right actually i was serving in iraq when i was 18 um well a little bit after that but uh, i actually grew up here and my dad was a commercial mullet fisherman with large gill nets. You got it in your blood. I believe so, yes. Um, it's definitely family, I mean, we grew up in it. So, especially the areas that we went today, um, north, Crystal River, Yankee Town area, where it was really shallow with all the rocks around and oyster bars. That's the area that I grew up fishing with my dad. Which, not to get ahead of ourselves, that is man-made. All those islands, you know, that was kind of crazy to me because as I fished in the Keys before, even back home, like, it's all glacier-cut stuff, and now this right. is man-made. And it doesn't look like it's man-made. Right. But the man-madeness of it has created incredible tidal highways for the bait to go up and down. Um, even our ty uh, tarpon migration that we have is a thousand new fish that come through there every day from down south Florida and they migrate all the way to Louisiana and they will literally go up and around all of those islands, all of the points that we fished, all those areas. Yeah, it's crazy. Some actually of all, I've been to Venice, I don't know how many times because of one of our in-house guys, Country Steve, that everybody knows. He's got a place just outside of Venice, nice. Louisiana, but my best red fishing ever was in Pensacola. Wow. Insane. On tuna poppers. Nice. Like, but again, perfect timing. Like, they're not right. there, but a couple weeks they come in and that kind of whole bottleneck deal. But Florida has a lot of things. I think it's just like they call it old Florida, right? As you get even a little farther north and maybe yes. west in the panhandle. So there's just, it's so diverse. I think when people think of Florida, if they only go to Key West or they only go to Miami, it's totally different. You come to Crystal River, to me, it's almost like old Florida, but kind of south a little bit. Right, definitely. I mean, once you go about 10 miles north of here, it's all preserved land and you go for miles and miles and miles. You drive about four or five hours before you see any kind of civilization like you get here um, in further South Florida. So obviously you did your military stuff. Thank you for your service. And you know, whatever happens there, we'll leave that alone. But we want to talk about how you got back into the boat or how you start working towards getting in the boat, right? Because it's just like you asked me, like, so how do you get into guiding? Like there's sometimes a great story and sometimes just a whole lot of hard work and working two jobs or, so what's your deal? Right, so I guess it was a little bit of both of that. Um, one of the reasons after I served the military, I came back here to old Florida or Florida's nature coast. Number one, the reason uh, I grew up here, right? So my family's here. Number two was because of the fishing. I mean, the fishing is incredible. Even today, we caught, I don't know, 13, 14 different species. We were just trying to add that up. And, <laughs> there, was th and there was a couple that I wasn't even, what was the what was the little puffer one? Or what was the, what was the one that, I, Pig, yeah, oh, pig the fish. fish. <laughs> yeah, I got a little video of the pig fish and, of course... The farm animals. <laughs> a, few, a few catfish. <laughs> Meow. But, yeah, that was, that was... Yeah, there was a lot of species going on there. Right. So, prior to COVID, I was actually selling remote fly-in fishing out of northern Manitoba, uh, Canada, and it was a fully remote lodge. Um, but my office was here, so everything that I did there was all remote, marketing, um, logistical work, because it's a lot of logistics getting things up from here to, or from uh, Winnipeg to the lodge, because there's no roads, it's all fly-in. Uh, so I did that about four days a week for about three years, and the other three days a week I was out here on the water learning as much as I possibly could learn, uh, water temperatures, um, tides, you know, different areas that the fish hold different times of the year because in the winter time we're not going to fish where we fish today. Number one, it's going to be too shallow to get to. So the majority of our time we're spending it in the rivers or um, out in the deeper areas, sheep's head fish and hog fish and that kind of thing. You've got to be a good guide, in my opinion, whether you're in Florida or Ohio like I'm doing, is you have to have a pretty deep kind of index of what you have to do because as you get this condition in, like you said, the wind, the currents, the tides in your case, so there's a whole bunch of things. I think that's a big thing I see with guides that 
they try to learn on somebody else's dime instead of kind of doing what you said where they're doing that on their, you know, instead of trying to book trips and then they either burn people or like, it's kind of shady a little bit where you like don't know, like, I mean, we're all, we're all constantly learning. Like I said, 20 some years in, I'm still learning every day. Absolutely. If but, you do learn it all, you should write a book. You'll probably become a millionaire. I did write a book. <laughs> I did not become a millionaire from the book. However, it was a pretty good gig and everybody told me don't write the book. <laughs> I honestly am going to write another one about my guide experiences. That's that would be cool. That's going to be my last one and done because I have seen some things happen in the boat. Have you? I have. <laughs> well, let's talk about that because people love stories. So, and awesome. you're very open. So that's the thing. If we get so many people on here and guides, you know, and they're like, oh yeah, we had this crazy thing. And then the red light hits, you know, and it's mm -hmm. kind of like buck fever or whatever. The red light button, I like to call it. And then they're like, ah, ah, ah. So I guess one of the craziest things that I've ever had to deal with was ripping hooks out of people. Oh, um, one particular was this old, poor old guy. Oh my goodness. His wife got him really good, right in the face. And I uh, had to rip the jig out with a shrimp on it um, after she started yelling at him, like it was his fault that her hook ended up in his cheek, yes. You know, there's stories about things just about like that. But <laughs> I've, I've got a few hook stories too. Those are, surprisingly though, people always ask that. People always ask me at least, they're like, have you ever fallen in and how many times you've been hooked? Those are like. Probably one and two. Absolutely. No matter who you are, it's like they all people think of the same thing. And I'm just right. kind of thinking like, are you trying to hook me and do you want to push me in the lake? We just got started. <laughs> but yeah, that's so have you had any other where you like actually had to end a trip or take somebody in? Oh boy. Um, we're going to get for real here, huh? Well, I mean, I, listen, <laughs> we won't use any names. <laughs> I, I've talked to a few people. They're like, oh no. I'm like, then you haven't done it long enough. Right, right. Um, there have been a couple that uh, I have do not answer or do not book when they call. I have them saved as Steve, don't do not book, or you know, country <laughs> Steve. Steve. Yeah, Steve, <laughs> Bob, Cunt. Mm. Um, but the, yeah, it's, there was one in particular we were scalloping, this is about two years ago. Scalloping, you gotta fire them, huh? Yeah, they, um, they, there was a big storm coming with lightning cracking everywhere. And, uh, you know, it was one of those things where it's like, listen, okay, we've we got five minutes and we got to go. Um, I run all these amazing electronics on my boat that tell me exactly where this storm's going, how fast it's moving, how far it is from me, and, okay, it's time to go. And so... We're not uh, guessing anymore. Yeah, the, it, was, it was more of a 15-minute ordeal trying to get them to, to go. Lolly and, dagging. you know, they had to go potty before we leave. Um, they had to get all their stuff. I mean, their stuff was slung all over the boat. It was... Like way cleaner than this hotel room. Let me wow, just put it that that's way. saying something because we are using a studio <laughs> in a hotel room. But uh, yeah, they and that. I mean, we got wet. I mean, th so my I really try not to ride drive in the rain um, on a boat. It's kind of like riding a motorcycle. It just stings very, very badly, and it hurts everybody. It's not enjoyable. Um, so I try to get in before that happens, but. Yeah, they're definitely on the do not book list. You get a lot, I mean, I've had a lot of people, they're like, oh, that's why. And you're like, that's why you're paying me. You're pay fishing, but it's almost safety really is, even though I'm not, I'm not like, you know, the safety police. But it is higher in the list where you're like, I know what's going to happen before it happens a lot of times. Right? Absolutely. And again, like you said, whether it's the uncomfortable of the rain staying or the fact that your, your lines are hovering and we could be struck by lightning and this right. would be really bad and then I'm not going to get insurance and right. over 10 minutes you cost me a whole lot of money and <laughs> maybe somebody permanent damage type of thing. Yes. I have a friend who was on our podcast who works in the fishing industry who was struck by lightning in a boat. Wow. Shout out Doug. I hope you're okay, Doug. He, he's, he doesn't look any better. He does not look any better. He didn't have a lot to start with at the beginning, but he doesn't listen to this, I'm sure. But yeah, so any other things? Because I mean, I've got several where it's just I think it's sometimes you just don't have the right person. So like we have several people, you know, that work for my deal and sometimes they're like, I'm just la, you know, you mm -hmm. got to, and that works amazing for some people and not others, but you're pretty chill. I think you could handle an eclectic mix of people. Yes, I fair? think you're I patient. do a pretty good job at it. I'm very patient. I, um, I'm definitely very patient. I just- I called you the patient police today. <laughs> Which is, it, was, it is important. I mean, I don't know that I went that angle, but. Uh, right. Well, I think that sometimes being a guide, that's what it comes down to. Um, a lot of times I have four people fishing on the boat. You guys did very well today. We didn't hook a ton of rocks. We only got tangled 52 times, which is usually is like 101 times. 
Definitely. Okay, let me rephrase that. You and JJ got tangled 52 times. The ladies got tangled twice. I, I don't know what was going on there. I wonder but. if your counter, I'm going to have to get her <laughs> Katie Joe counter addition a little, because her numbers from math is like fuzzy. No, it's the same way when I say, okay, five more minutes, and then all of a sudden, um, Leanne hooks a big, huge drum, because I knew that drum was going to come through there in those five minutes. And sure enough, you're it honest, happens. but now you're just full of shit. No, I'm not listening. at all. <laughs> I'm listening to what you're saying, but I mean, I'm going to put waiters on in Florida, the 103 freaking degrees right now. But it is hot. It is. <laughs> I don't know. How, I guess you just get used to it, but it's like, you know, I'm a little fair skinned. Like, I obviously mm -hmm. cover up, I wear Sim sun gloves and the whole deal, but do you really get used to it, or are you just being, you just, this is what you are in? Um, I think that, I think I get used to it. I'll be honest, I'd rather be hot than cold. I don't like being cold. See, it's, I, I ice guide. Yikes. Yeah. So I always say I can dress for that, right. but I can't dress for the melting that happens. Sure, you today. can. Well, you undress, I mean. You told me we had to have shoes, and you didn't even have shoes on today, but you said we had no shirt, no shoes, no problem, or I don't know. No something. service, yeah, no shrimp. Something no like shrimp. that, yeah. So give me another one, because again, when you're, I think, I think a lot of it too with a guy, part of it's personality. Like for me, mm -hmm. people watch the video and they're like, hey, I want to go with that guy because he's not uptight or whatever. You know, right. some of that. But then also I think it's the area because you get into, let's say the Keys would be a good example. There are people that are going to go in the Keys and I think Crystal River might be the same thing here where they're like, hey, you know, we're going to go see manatees and we're going to go kayaking and we're going to go fishing. We don't fish. This is probably the only time we're going to fish in five years. Right. And sometimes I think that that makes it easier because they listen. Yes. But then there's other times where like when you're literally teaching someone how to cast and you need to be 20 feet, not 10 or 30, not 20. Right. Because if they only cast 10 feet, they catch a lot of catfish. Right. I mean, it's but, but this you know, time of the year. So you get a different type of personnel when you are in a tourist fishing town versus someone that maybe like maybe not a great example, but like we mean country sea fish in Venice, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Most people that go there you kind of got to want to go there. You don't like just, oh, let's turn here. Right, right, so definitely. I, I think there's, not that I'm saying they're good fishermen or they're right. listeners, because some of you guys don't listen so good. But is it is it fair that like the tourist fishermen, it's a different crowd totally? Absolutely, it's different. And so and, how do you handle that? So, and it's not just the tourist fishermen. It's, I actually fish a lot of folks from up north who are used to trolling. Um, or dropping, they don't cast. They don't do a whole lot of casting. Which up is there. a lot of what we do, to be exactly. Honest with you. So I would actually rather use those guys than tourists because I don't typically get a whole lot of tourism. Um, the majority really? of my clients, yeah, the majority of my clients, they come back. They know they have to book their trip when they step off my boat. Like they're booking their next trip or their next five trips when they step off my boat because um, they know it might be a while before they get back on. So, so like um, scalloping, that's a totally different, like we're doing both with you? Yeah. So that's kind of a totally different, <clears throat> excuse me, totally different person? Yes, yeah, scalloping is definitely tourism. And maybe time of year too, because I got to be honest, we're down here working uh, for some sponsors and doing some stuff. We're like, hey, right. let's sneak in a little fishing. Probably not the best time that I would come down with nothing else being a fair-skinned ginger. Right. When it's 100 degrees out, literally. But yes. so spring and fall, it's probably more options for you, is that fair? Yes, actually the fish are a little more motivated to eat. They're not super hot, they're not super cold at that point, and they are schooled up. There's a lot of movements going on during that time. Um, a lot of your fish during the summer go offshore to spawn. They go in deep, way deeper water, um, and they're, they can be scattered anywhere, especially your redfish and your snook. And then during the fall, they come back in, and they stay in here during the winter time. So, so look, same with your grouper too and hogfish. Look right in that camera and tell them people the, how hot that water is before, like just before the blow. Well, we started this morning with 85.4 and by the time we ended today, it was 91.2. And what's the water? It was 92.3 uh, two days ago. It's been 93 already. Like what, what, I mean, how, does it start like bubbling at times? <laughs> it feels like it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's unbelievable. But that's honestly, we last year we hit 97. And the Keys, I know they were hitting like 103. Jeez. They had record heat, we, uh, heat water temps down there last year. And we're definitely on track to hit them again this year. Mm -hmm. So we pray for the 
afternoon thunderstorms, you know, let it cool it down a little bit. And that's what happened. Um, we've had some unusual, well, I guess usual rain the last couple days. And so before that, in the beginning of uh, July and then through the middle of June, we didn't really have a whole lot of thunderstorms or rain. Um, but the last couple days, we've had a lot and it's cooled that water tub down quite a bit. So. Interesting. So back home, we've got an implosion of num like the number of guides since COVID, like mm -hmm. insane. I think some people are like, oh, hey, how much are you getting per day to do this? Oh, this is easy money. And like, I'm going to give a little spiel and then I'm going to see how honest you're going to be with us because people will say, hey, you're making X number of dollars a day. Like, no, 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 no. It's just like any business. You mm -hmm. take in this, you know, when you have to redo a lower unit or you're buying a new boat or you're, like you said, you're getting all new Shimano reels every year because you just, you may catch a shark on one or a bull red and then a little snap or whatever. So they're just, you're, it's really hard on gear and mm -hmm. even more so probably here. So the net, I don't think people understand. They just see big, you know, like lottery ticket things or something and they right. don't understand the big picture of this, right? So back home at least, I can tell you that the numbers of licensed guides and there's tons of bootleggers and not just like there is everywhere. Mm -hmm. But that number since COVID is, I don't say it's doubled, but statistically it's, it's almost that. Right. For us. I mean, it's just every Tom, Dick, and Harry's doing this legally, illegally, whatever, jumping on top and all the ethics and the morals and all that stuff, whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, before cell phones, we used to punch people. Now we can't. At least that's <laughs> what the attorneys say. But uh, guys, I would say th this is a guy's business. Real talk. Okay. I'm just, I mean. Yeah, no, I understand. St yes. Stats well. I'm just saying stats right, well. Right, I'm right. not saying the women can't do it. We, right. We had a great day with Katie Jo. She was very nice. But, like, I would even say, I'm going to say this to, to say where I'm going, because I think that you have to say this properly, which I rarely do that. I would say 70-some percent of the guides, in, you know, there's, like, out of our 900 and something in Ohio licensed, mm -hmm. like, charter 50-ton or whatever captains, we have, I think, like, two or three women. I'm sure there could be more, but that right. I know of. So, again, 99% men. And I would say of that 70% of them, they suck. I'm just being honest. Like, and a part of it is, is, is because, again, they're, they're guys that work at 9 to 5. They're trying to do in the weekend. They don't have, they're not out knowing, seeing the movements right. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Some of them are looking for a quick buck. They have, if they take three people out, they have three rods. Again, I'm not picking anybody, but it is when you do it for a living. Right. Like you run a restaurant and then you see somebody trying to serve food out of the back of their truck. You're kind of like, yeah, you're a shit bag. <laughs> I mean, just. Yeah, absolutely. Talk. So when I say that, you know, again, I'm not picking on any individual people here. I could. But women that I, a lot of the women guides that I've seen aren't very good, not gonna lie to you. Right. And, and they're just not good at catching fish or they're not good at? I think depends on where you're at. Like where I live, decision making, I mean, life's about decision making, but mm -hmm. where I'm at, decision making is huge. Right. And I think if you haven't done enough or you have a certain mindset, now this is guy, this is not gender specific. Mm -hmm. there's, there's, like I said, numbers yeah. wise, there's way more. I just think we pick on as guys behind right. closed doors, not on camera, real talk. That's okay. You, you pick on the women more because there's only so few of them and average, they're not going to take me on. Right. I'm not trying to be an egomaniac. That's but, okay. But you know what I mean? So for you, I guess long-winded way of getting there. Have you what, what are you experiencing, especially being in a town like this that has, I mean, I don't know how many charter boats, but every restaurant we go through, there's 40 charter boats yeah. docked right out front of it. I would say there's at least 150. Oh, it, at, at least. least. It, I, probably more than that, but. Yeah, I think you're way low. Yeah, I think so too. Um, you know where I'm going with that. I was, yeah, I was dancing, but, okay. I, but I'm trying to give a full, like, cause I, I don't dance away from the top here, but I'm right. trying to, to set the, the, the tone of, you know, not just meaning, I'm not picking on a new, right. like, I, will, I don't care if you're a guy or a girl, I'll tell you, you suck when you suck. Right, I understand that. It's been interesting. Um, it's been an interesting journey, for sure. Um, so when I actually first started guiding, there were no full-time female guides that I know of. Um, a lot of them were doing, like, for example, what my one girlfriend here, she's a guide, but she's a school teacher. So she does the nine to five or eight to four, and she does it on the weekends. She does it during the summer because um, that's just her scheduling. That's the schedule. So same thing with a few of the other female guides that I know of. Um, they, were do, they would do Mansi tours during the winter because things may slow down. The fishing does get a little bit tougher depending on, you know, the kind of boat you have and what you're targeting. Um, versus the summer months. So then they would start going back to scalloping, let's say, for example. Um, same thing happens. I mean, and I don't really know if this is a female or male thing, but you, 
come about May, since scallop season opens July 1st, come May on social media, you'll see about 30, at least 30 new guides pop up, like scalping trip, scalping trip, scalping trip. And I'm thinking, who are these people? You know, so of course I do my research to start looking them up and seeing who they are and where their business is out of and all of that kind of stuff. Because, but, um, cause I'm nosy. You gotta check out the competition sometimes. Um, but yeah, so when I first started guiding full time, I mean, there was no, hey, let's see how this works. I'm gonna do it part time. It was full on. Um, I stopped when COVID hit and it shut us down when getting into Canada. That was a good time to do it, just so you know. Well, absolutely. I, I mean, that I had spent three years learning everything I could learn. So for me, it was a good time. You know, whether I would have done that, well, I couldn't have done it three years prior to that because I was traveling the world in the military and I was in college. I actually do have a four year degree in something too, that I'll useless. never use. <laughs> um, but, uh, it was just time. I mean, it, I felt like I was comfortable enough to a put people on my boat safely, and b I've been in enough storms. I had been through um, different things where electronics went out during storms, so I had that much experience under my belt that just, it was time. You nailed it. You know? Like what I see, just went from a distance, I can watch. A lot of people don't know how to handle their boat. Right? I'm not even talking at the dock. Right. You know, that's that's a big one for guys out there that are listening to this, is learn how to drive your boat under a variety of conditions. That and load and unload it. I mean, to be able to load your boat back up on the boat ramp is is crucial, especially when a storm's coming. I mean, that's your, for me, that's my lifeline. If something happens to my boat, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'll have to borrow one for a while. <laughs> but Yeah, not good, not good. Well, you, and you brought up like social media, and again, I'm like, even though I'm relatively young, a few grays in there, Katie Joe, but yeah, producers rolling eyes. But um, you know, like social media to me, I, I'm like an old soul in that I'm like, ah, f social media because I was doing stuff with TV and magazines where right. you had to kind of you, you had to earn like different people like literally gave me the hey Ross is good or hey Ross you right. know like the old way. And again, I I know we can't put the genie back in the bottle, mm -hmm. but at the same point, I think like you said, you, somebody comes out puts a Maybe they got an uncle that's good with, you know, electronics or whatever, knows the algorithms, and all of a sudden they got a free Facebook page, and all of a sudden there's no, there's no cost of entry. Right. And I know the producer always rolls my eyes when I start talking about this stuff, but it's like, again, when, when it's your deal, like you're so vested in, you know, into this like I am, right? so I, like, I appreciate that. Right. And it's, again, when you see somebody kind of roll in, like I said, for you and me, it's fishing. For maybe these other people listening, it's if they're in the restaurant business or an auto mechanic, and you're like, Dude, you just bought your tools from Snap-on because your uncle's loaded. Yeah. And, and you got a building now, and you're trying to fix cars. You don't, you don't tell you're doing. Right. It, it, same thing, but yet with fishing, it seems to be accepted where that mechanic would get run out of business immediately. Right. Right? And the restaurant, everybody would be, we aren't going there again. But yeah, with fishing, it just seems to be different. Yeah, I think fishing is completely different. I think fishing for me what i experienced was i was actually friends with a lot of people in the fishing well they're fishermen right there are a lot of people both men and women um some guides and things like that but it felt like the moment that i became a full-time guide i kind of lost a lot of those friends i don't know um why that was i feel like maybe because they wanted me to tell them where i catch my fish or how i catch my fish oh girl. or oh girl. see what you, i mean and so now it's like wait a minute i'm you know oh and they wanted me to take them fishing of course so it's like but wait a you, minute this is my actual full-time job now like this is how i make a living this is how i um provide for my future you know and have retirement you have 30 like days that, in so. a row and you have one day that maybe somebody cancels you're almost at times at least i'm speaking for myself oh i get that it you're like now yes. I can cut the grass. Now I can be responsible at home and sleep in maybe Take a little a nap. bit. So like sleeping in until like six. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you got your buddies going, hey, well, why don't you take me fishing today? And you're like, are you insane? They're like, oh, Katie, Joe, Ross, they're assholes. And you're right. like, you don't understand. Right. 100%. Like what yeah. you said is friends that don't understand. I think those probably weren't maybe not speaking for you, speaking for myself. Some of those people probably weren't the best friends in the first place, yes. maybe conditional. But like you said, they're like, well, what do you mean you aren't telling me? I'm like, well, you don't fix my car for free. Right. You know, and, and I think the thing with fishermen, my, my biggest beef, I, most of the things I complain about, I talk about, I think are life things anymore. Like you go to Walmart, you go to this place, the things you see with people, it's, it's not a fisherman. Mm -hmm. It's just the, the mentality and the lifestyle of people that has changed that maybe it's because I'm older and grumpy. But I think it's some things have 
they're just gotten out of hand a little bit, right? right. So, but I always say fishing because that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But I think some of these things are just different with life when people don't put the same perspective on it. Right. Because it's you fishing, right? And then when you put them in the same circumstance, they just don't understand it the same. I don't. I know you can understand. I don't know if that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, I always say it's like stealing. A famous restaurant's barbecue sauce and then go and replicating it and with the same exact recipe and opening restaurant I feel like that's kind of the same thing but yeah so I mean it's the uh, it's okay though like you said there weren't friends I guess to begin with but I just feel like fishing every I feel like sometimes fishing it brings people together but then it also creates this atmosphere where people feel that you should openly tell them where you catch fish like for example when I go my hog fishing spots I mean I'm running the uh, when I'm fishing for hogfish those are the absolute one fish that I 100% never caught with anybody else except you have for a hogfisher on your neck yes because we favorite. wanted to go hog fishing today I Katie Joe, and I was like and you're like we might have to beat you up and I'm like just do it <laughs> get me booked at the dentist and the chiropractor let's do it <laughs> I wanted to go hog fishing um, that I, it's amazing. It's so much fun. Um, and there's so many other fish out there to catch too. You just can't keep them because of regulations. Thanks to our government and NOAA and every, all of that stuff. Yeah. Well, that's all right though. Um, but you know, people actually reach out to me and ask me for numbers. They're like, I know Girl. this. And they say, this is a long, I know this is a long shot, but could you give me some numbers where you're catching your hogfish just the other day? And I'm like, uh, how, the, the, do I, how do I be nice about this? The funny part to me is, is I'm probably not as diplomatic as you. I'm not. Yeah. But I'm, I get <laughs> like we have a pretty good social media following, and I get a lot of those messages, and I get a lot of questions, and even things I'm like, we like, hey, how do you set up a dipsy diver? Which I know is not something you're doing, but I'm like, well, we just put a video up last week on how to rig a dipsy dive. The whole that's the video. Right. But can't you just tell me? And I'm like, dude, I just worked 20 hours today. Yeah. I put a video up that's free for you. Are you, and again, that's again, that's not a fishing thing to me. That's a mentality of people. Like I feel right. like that person's going to do that with auto mechanics and restaurants. But it yeah. just seems to be more accepted because what we do is, again, I know I'm going to get yelled at by producer here, but it's not a well. That's it's different because that's not. They don't look at yours as a job. Not at all. That's my own family hardly looks at it. <laughs> look at looks at me like I have a job. They think I'm just out having fun fishing all day. Mom, did you hear that? My 100% of my... It's not. I work like 80, 90 hours a week. Right. You know, we, we fished all day today. We're in here doing a podcast because this is part of what we do with our media stuff and this right. is a big part of it. And so it's like, you know, go home and then we have to get a download all this stuff. And I'm not, what was me, but that's, that's a part of what we do. And a lot of people that they're not in it to win it. Right. You know, that's not part of what they're doing, but... And then I get to go back and wash off the flounder guts that went all over the boat today. For Remember me. when you yeah, really ripped their guts out? Like I say, ripped their lips. <laughs> well, we had a, yeah, we had a flounder coming, and you know these girls were just on me all day long, and so I got that thing coming, and it was like a sheet of plywood, and I wasn't gonna let her sink down. Skiing. And I brought it right in there. We had that. Mm, yeah. Miles an hour. And Ooh. now you get to have flounder tacos. We are having some flounder tacos <laughs> shortly, but yeah. So social media stuff like so was that instrumental you know again it's like everything there's pros and there's cons so was mm -hmm. that helpful for getting you to you know even though i hate that stuff right and i'm you know being like ah but was that um i guess in the beginning it was um anymore i rarely post if you notice i didn't take a single photo today of us That's um never mind. i and i even grabbed my phone i was gonna take a picture of the fish on the table and i was like nah i'll just start cleaning them and then as i'm cleaning them i'm thinking oh man this is a lot of fish maybe i should have taken a photo because this is actually a good day um in 103 degree weather you know and 90 degree Kitty, you should take the photos. You need to take more photos. I know. The company's um, Z-Man. Z-Man, Lakewood, <laughs> thank Sims. You, thank you, thank you. you. <laughs> but uh, I think that most of, most of my business now, um, after being a few years in, is all word of mouth. So it's the they, best type. Yeah. Okay. My favorite part is when my clients bring their fish home and then they share it with their neighbors. They're like, hey, you want some of this wonderful tasting fish? And then guess what? The neighbors call me to go fishing. So that's kind of some of the, you know, so for me, social media, I feel it's, I don't know, do you, like, I feel like all these guides always send me friend requests. They always want to be my friend on social media. And I have this rule where if I see you out in public and you're friends with me on my social media, 
like we should say hi, right? Otherwise, why would you be on my social media? It's, it's strange to me. And I get at least, I don't know, 10 guides, and not just from here, but all over, a week, friend requesting me. I, it's, it's strange. And then, I, of course, I have to do my research. And I'm like, uh, I don't really, why? Why do we have to be friends? On my, you know, on, my personal, on my personal page, which just so many of you maybe don't know, you have to have a personal page, essentially, to have mm -hmm. a, a business page. On my personal page, because I have, I think, 2,000 waiting friend requests. Yeah, same. Mine thing says right below, if I don't know you, follow me on Big Water Fishing. Oh, I like that. Because, again, like, like you said, first of all, I don't have room. I, I physically can't have those numbers, but... Right. The thing, and again, this is way off topic, but like my mom's always like wanting to post things, you know, the grandkids and all this yeah. stuff. And I'm like, mom, I, this may sound weird, but it's like I don't want people that are all over the world that I don't know because no offense, there's some weird ass sons of bitches out there <laughs> that are seeing our Christmas. Yeah. So I have I have multiple business pages. We have YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. That's my business. So if you want to see fish and stuff, that's what we're doing. That's nice. That's so a good idea. That's that's just what I do, and I think that helps out a little bit with things. Just. Cause, like you said, I mean, we could do, and I'll just, the producers and my own people will rip me apart because they're like, quit going on and on about that. But the stuff that you see or the friend requests, like you said, I had somebody that was like, well, I'm sponsored by Mercury, so, and I knew you're sponsored by Mercury, you're on their national team, so you need to uh, give me numbers. And I'm like, what? Like, I, I, I don't even know how this, like, goes through people's minds. Right. Or, well, I'm a guide over here, so I'm going to come over. Not, not even, hey, man, could you throw me a bone or something? Like, you need to do this. And I'm mm -hmm. like, you obviously don't know me because I will throw a fit and I will say some stuff, you know what I mean? Right. Like that's just, I'm, I'm a little more direct than you. Well. I'm not, that's not a dig, that's, I, maybe you can teach me. I'm actually, I'm, I'm pretty nice, however. I've noticed. Unless Except you for, start cursing at me or yet calling me a name, then you will, I'm not that nice. You weren't that nice even before I called you No Fish Katie. Like, I don't <laughs> really know that was all going on, but. Catfish King. Catfish King. These girls really beat it. We had way too much estrogen in the boat today, and they're just really beating up on me. I was like estrogen ocean in the Gulf, but nevertheless. But so real talk. Okay, since you're kind of open, we got you wound up, and there's a little bit of alcohol in your hand. The women deal, like other women, like so. Again, I'm going to ICAST very soon, and I think things have ch changed a little bit. The certain clothing companies and stuff, where you'd see girls walking through there in almost no clothes. Guys like me, maybe not exactly me, but guys are responsible for that because people, if you, it's like cocaine. Well, why is cocaine a problem? Because people buy it. Right. So if nobody uses it, it's not a problem. And it's the same thing with the sex is selling in, in the fishing thing. But mm -hmm. I know you're so honest and nice, but you're also PC, but real talk, like because you got street cred and you're doing this and you can catch them. When you see the girls in the bikinis that can't do shit, that's got to chap your ass. Oh, Don't absolutely. Lie to me. Okay. No, okay. it's. They can't even, I mean, they, they would not even be able to drive a boat, never mind try to catch their own fish. I mean, there are some that, you know, they, they do represent, they do wear bikinis and they are also really good anglers and that kind of thing, but 1%. 1%. 1 <laughs> Maybe 2%. 1%. Um, honestly, I don't know. I haven't fished with a lot of them, um, but the, so I have fished with maybe a handful um, that I feel like they are good anglers, you know, and they could drive a boat and they probably could find fish on their own. Um, but actually, the majority of those are not prancing around in bikinis. Since you're a unicorn here, a woman that can fish good, okay? Ultimate compliment. Oh, thank you. Ultimate compliment from me. I'm very hard-nosed in case anybody hasn't noticed. My people will tell you, like, oh, my God. I can cast really well. We might have to. I, I, I did good <laughs> casting, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was pretty, yeah, I was flipping. <laughs> you know, I was making that rain over there. But at any rate, so people are going to watch this and be like, he gave her a compliment? We might have to go fish with her because she doesn't give anybody compliments. But so, again, not trying to harp on this, but because we have a unicorn sitting here, how could we not? Because we've had people on before, we've even had some women on this before, and I think sometimes everybody is so afraid, especially some like we had one out that's sponsored by a bunch of companies, and you're so programmed. Right. You know, so many people are programmed that this is what I... I say what I, because I think I have to say, and then I'm kind of that rogue where I just like, uh, fire me then. Right. And I almost get in trouble like every day. <laughs> like it's like junior high all over. But so women, this is my question. Are the other women anglers, because I already know the answer to this, but since I have it 100% next to me that can tell me, the other women anglers probably worse on the women than the men? Around here, definitely. 
I feel like they're in their cliques. So you get the like bikini. You, yeah, you get the bikini girls that like when they show a fish in their bikinis, then all the other bikini girls are like, oh, you look amazing, so hot, blah, blah, blah. And then you've got the other side of the clique where the girls that are not wearing bikinis and they're actually like really out there, like on their own, maybe in their own kayak or their own paddleboard or their own little skiff or um, they they kind of stick together. And so when they actually catch a fish, you've got those girls. I don't ever see it cross a whole lot. There's not a whole lot of crossing in this um, whenever it comes to the clicks type thing. So I'll be honest, I'm, I just, I feel like for myself, I want to a hundred thousand percent be known as this unicorn that knows how to go out, find her own fish, catch her own fish, put clients on fish, um, and do it with, I, I do wear a bikini like with my family, but even when I scallop, you guys will see tomorrow, um, I wear, this is what I'm scalloping. You're going to be a prude, aren't you, tomorrow? You know, I am. I mean, <laughs> it's just, it's, I feel like, um, it, my, for me, my target, honestly, is women, right? Women are decision makers when it goes to, comes to vacations, when it comes to spending money and that kind of thing. Like, that majority, they, and so, if you're, for me, if I'm professionally dressed or whatever without my shoes on on the boat um <laughs> uh i feel like they're the one they're going to be more apt to want to go with me versus seeing a female guide that you know every third picture that she posts of clients of the fish her butt sticking out of a bikini so well, they're not going to want to book that lady it's funny, i wouldn't it's funny you say that because even again down here or even my way mm -hmm. there are guys and rather it's girlfriends wives or whatever that are the co-captains, there are guys that book the trip 100% because they're like, hey, Captain Bob's got his wife. Right. And she's right. got things going on. And it's like, we I can't Yeah. And, yeah. And I, I could name a few that you probably know too. And you're like, okay, that's fine. Some of them could fish, not fish. But to your point, I've heard some of my clients, like the wife's like, there's no way in hell that my husband's going up there and going on a boat with that. Right. Because of whatever, and there's all kinds of other shenanigans back in the day. Right, and we all know women are gonna rule that. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna overrule that decision. There. So, do you think you have you have more women in your boat because of that? Absolutely, yes. I have. So, I actually inspired quite a few women that I had no idea. Um, so, typically, I'm about 20 minutes north of Crystal River. It's called Yankee Town. Um, don't ask me where I got the name. I guess some Yankees came, and that's what they named it. Right here. Um, Anyway, so I typically fish up there. So coming to Crystal River, uh, which is just hop, skip, and jump away, uh, a lot of the time I'm not down here because it is very busy. It's very touristy. Um, there's a lot of boats. There's a lot of uh, rental boats. So I try to stay a little bit further north. And, and stay. So when I go fishing, I like to not be around boats. I like to be myself. That's the whole point of going out and enjoying nature so you can you don't get yelled at, cursed at, and you can kind of um, just enjoy being out there. And the fish are better up there, I feel like, because they're not getting pressured like they are down here. Anyway, um, when I came back here on July 1st for scallop season, I'm driving, down, I'm riding down the river, and all in different boats, all these women are yelling and waving, Captain Katie Joe, we follow you. Um, I do write in Coastal Angler Magazine every month, they, they were yelling, we read your articles every month. And so it was just kind of neat to, to see those women. And I'm sure that my, um, me being here and me becoming a full-time guide and just, again, being professional about it um, and nice. And that, I mean, she right, was it, yeah, generally absolutely. nice, but there was a few snarky moments but I mean nobody's perfect <laughs> you got to read your clientele yeah. if, if they're very yes I'm pretty sure you tried to push me off the boat at one point in time today though I asked you if you've ever been <laughs> pushed out of your own boat and then you walked dangerously close to me <laughs> yeah. but uh, it's nice I don't know I, I, I thoroughly enjoy having women on the boat and to be honest with you a lot of times yes they do outfish the men especially in the beginning of the trip do they listen they listen I the guys it. are wanting to do their own thing, and uh, they t they'll typically sit back and kind of watch the woman catch and catch and kind of watch me walk her through it and teach her through it throughout the trip. And then by the end of the day, 
Same scenario today, right? The women caught the fish all morning. So full of until shit, the last girl. spot. You were doing and so then, good with your honesty, and then you're just full of and shit. And then you finally helped contribute to dinner. Oh my God. <laughs> it's like I literally need waiters on 103 degree heat right now, but. No, I, I think like for me because I do like I've you don't know but I've contract hosted for twenty some years on TV shows and stuff and the hardest thing for me is because people know fortunately you know what I do and I have a good reputation right but like you know I'm walleye fishing or smallmouth or salmon guiding you know and then I come down here like you know I've hosted redfish shows mm -hmm. and I always tell the guys I'm like listen and they're like well, what do you mean I'm like I'm a walleye guy yeah even though I do other things. I'm like, listen, you need, you're like, I have, the guy who's a really good red fisherman in the boat. That's why we're filming you. Right. And, and that's, <laughs> I kind of get the opposite thing. And again, I know I'm kind of the different unicorn where I'm like, I'm telling them, like, what do I need to do? Like, oh, you're good. I'm like, no, no, no. What I, what I need to do to be successful <laughs> in what I do and right. what you guys are doing is a thousand percent different. And sometimes it's those little, little tweaks. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, you showing us and talking about even tomorrow, like you were scalloping and stuff, like that's really important. I think a lot of guys, you know, that are going on guide trips, they either don't listen or sometimes the guides are not vocal because they think people don't want to, I get a lot of people that are like, I, they don't want to communicate with me. And I'm right. like, no, no, listen here, that's what we're doing. Yeah. You know, and I kind of have fun ways of, you know, trying to, to get more reception to that. Right. Because it makes a much better end thing. And that's the world we're going to kind of transition into is I wrote a piece for, is either Outdoor Life or Field and Stream years ago. And it's still, from what I'm told, one of their more producing things, you know, because it's... Oh, again, wow. Yeah, it's weird things. Like Meat Eater, we did one thing. Drunken Minnows was still their top fishing piece that I wrote, mainly probably because of the title. But at any rate, so I wrote a thing about, I think it was like 20 ways to have your guide fire you. Oh. And I couldn't get any... I know hundreds of guides. Mm -hmm. Literally hundreds, like literally. And really, really good fishermen all over the country, or world even. And I was really hard-pressed to get people to, you know, it wasn't like I was saying, Katie Joe, tell me about, you know, the worst trip, and it was Bob and Sue Smith from Akron, Ohio. Right. It, the, the whole point of it was, was when you go on a trip, mm -hmm. like if you're whoever's reading this in Outdoor Life, and you're going to hire Katie Joe, that you don't make these mistakes because you don't know the etiquette or you don't know what you don't know. Right. And so it was like, okay, and I had all these different guys, and it was pulling teeth to get these guys to be honest because they were so afraid of kind of like that, like we hmm. talked about before. Right. So, do you have any really good ones? Because I just certainly don't remember what was on that list, but it's, it's even funny too, because I do remember like one of my buddies in New Jersey was a guy, and he, I said, you know, what's your biggest pet peeve? And he was like, people showing up early. And I was like, are you insane? And for him it was, well, they get there an hour early and they think they're gonna leave early and I got things to do and they're standing over me and they can't right. help. And I was like, well, I get that. And then you send them off to get ice or this or that, or, you know, I would rather do that than, I would bet again, just culture change, I would bet in the last five years, I have 75% of my people late. Really? Crazy. Wow. And then, and when I say late, I'm not talking about like it's one minute past. I mean, at times it's it's ridiculous. Oh, wow. No, I, uh, well, that's definitely a pet. Early is a pet peeve, but then late's a pet peeve, especially for us. For me, I'm on salt water. So um, a lot of the times we're fishing tides and um, like again, way north where we went today, um, that area can get shallow very fast, as you saw. I mean, there's rocks and oysters and everything, so you can't really be late. <laughs> or you, but then early, you're you're trying to get the ice in the boat, and um, so I usually typically will launch my boat off the trailer. Um, so if they're early, they're kind of they're. I don't know. They're they're standing there on the dock and they're wanting, and then they just kind of help themselves on the boat. Okay, I'm just thinking. Um, oh boy, that, that that's a no go. My boat's it? a self bailing boat, so I don't know if you, you probably didn't notice today, but back in the corners, um, there are plugs on that. So I put those, I open those plugs in the morning so that things drain, like um, uh, rain or anything like that. It just kind of washes that whole stuff out. So those plugs are open, and when people get on the boat in the morning, um, they push it. it if they're not open, if they're not shut yet, if I haven't had a chance to shut them when I get in the water, their feet are gonna get soaking wet. So, <laughs> or it fills with water and then my bills pumps just sorry. So that's probably one of my biggest pet peeves is just somebody getting, people getting on the boat before you ever, they don't ask or it's just, Hey, we broke two and the majority of the time it's when they're really, when they're early, you know, when they're 30 minutes early. Oh my goodness. I'm like, I'm barely awake right now. <laughs> So, um, 
Yeah, that's usually... So what else can I do to piss you off tomorrow? Because I, I, I may intentionally get a couple of these thrown in. Pissed off? Yeah, I mean, like, how, how, I mean, what, what, what's like a level two Katie? You know what I mean? What do we got to do? I don't... Oh, my gosh. Let's, let's just let's call it like it is. It's hard. You it are pretty chill. I'm surprised. That's because it came with age. I used to not be that way. I, I told you I'm 21 tomorrow. Yeah. I used to not be... I, uh... I promise you, you have... So, back to, um, you know, becoming a female guide full-time and that kind of thing. I have had... I have been through the ringer with people. Not other guides. Just people in general who... I mean, I've had to pay $6,000 to lawyers to get them to leave me alone for defamation of character because they would not stop harassing me. No um, shit. I mean, like, yeah, like, and now... Like Facebook or something? Or? Social media, in person... Um, and then now they weren't guides. Other no, they weren't guides. They just they were. They're, like they're just they're just anti. They they, they fisher, have or? they don't have jobs. So I think that's part of the problem. They don't work, you know, oh, and they don't really have a whole lot to do. In the mom's basement deal. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe more in their trailer park deal, but still. <laughs> but it, did we just no go, offense. Did we just go trailer park boys right now? <laughs> So but, I, I want to hear a little bit more about, like, how elevated does this get? Oh, it's, it's, um, I mean, to the point where I, and this is, that was in the beginning. That was when I first started guiding. It was two women, um, nothing better to do, just harassing me. It was really. It was other crazy. women. And that went on for two years straight, yes. And so, again, I'm very chill, you know, and then even more so now, I recently moved on the water. And my next door neighbor, who is this conspiracy theory guy, theorist, and he's kind of, it's coming down to that, to the point where I just spent like four grand on cameras because he's actually recording my family and my friends and my clients and everything. Yeah, right, I'm, and he's cursing us out and he has signs that says, P on Airbnb and he calls me Captain Cujo. So it says P on Captain Cujo, F-U-C-K Captain Cujo. And um, anyway, it's been hell. I've only lived there for maybe two months now. And so anyway, I did catch his wife beating an alligator though with a two by four a couple weeks ago, and I caught it on film. That and called sounds FWC. like you can't do that. Oh, you're not allowed to beat an, an alligator. And no. so now they're getting themselves in trouble because they won't leave me alone. But I am, I truly am an easygoing person. Unless you start cursing at me. I, you know, like yelling at me, cursing at me for nothing that I did wrong that I don't know okay, I'm very so easy tomorrow going. we're gonna yell at Katie and okay I got it <laughs> no, I'm like I'm kind of fascinated with this because I I, I was just telling it, some of the guys at dinner just a couple nights ago where it's like it's a very long story I really shouldn't probably put on camera but you know run-ins at boat ramps like I've had so many <sighs> like insane situations that you're just like I don't what? And a really good friend of mine who's one of the all-time leading money winners in, in tournament fishing, he, he literally is like, the, he's like you. Mm -hmm. And he's a retired doctor, you know, surgeon guy's like super smart. And he's, but he's aggressive on the water, not as far as like running in your line or anything right. like that. But I'm like, he's very vocal about telling you, Katie, that's boom. And, mm -hmm. I'm, and it's out of character, right? And he told me a long time ago, I'm like, man, what do you, he's like, Ross, you have to understand you have to let people know your boundaries immediately. He said, right. if you let the dog pee on the carpet for three years, they don't know in the fourth year that it's not that that's right or not right. Right. And I think that's the same thing with me. And I'm very <laughs> people laugh to have seen some of our stuff. I am very blunt and upfront and be like, this is not acceptable. You need to leave, or I'm going to fuck you up type of thing. Right. And one of the watercraft guys we had back home literally saw one of these little interactions with some young kid that thought he was the next you know hot thing, and the watercraft guy came over after dissipating the situation I guess you can say and he said he hasn't been doing this long enough he hasn't seen you punch anybody in the face right and and you know back in the day sounded like an old man but you know I think that people thought there was repercussions just like these women yelling and doing just nasty things or your neighbor if one of them got smacked in the face like your grandpa would have done to him oh yeah we wouldn't have this anymore because no, they all, all you got gotta glass do jaws Katie they take that flip glass. off flip flop off and just start whacking them in the head like my grandma used to do, just start smacking them in the face. You women in your shoes. And I promise you, you they will leave you alone. The only bad thing is, I think that you run into issues having a captain's license in domestic violence or aggravated assault yeah, or whatever with a flip flop on your um, 
on your record there, that might cause issues. Good. But however, if people were able to get slapped in the face um, more often, like you could back in the day, yeah, I wouldn't have had any of these issues. I, then you would really see me be mean. Like, I, I have it. I, I have I, it in me. I do. I, it, it's kind of my my f head, but I, I kind of want to see it. I don't know if I want it directed at me, but I kind of want to see it because it's kind of like, oh, oh, she's got the mots. I kind of like that. But I, 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 I'm not surprised that you've had issues with things. Because yeah. any guide or any person, once you're in the public view, like we do a lot of things with right. the stuff that we do in our media company. And you're just dealing with people. You're going to have it. You go to the grocery store, you're going to have it. It's not, again, to me, it's not a fishing thing. Mm -hmm. So I'm not surprised you've had issues. I'm just shocked that they weren't anything to do with other dudes getting jealous because you have this person's client or that said, hey, we don't want to go with. Cause we, we fish with several people down here. Right. And a lot of them are very greenhorns. Like they, mm -hmm. you know, haven't done it a lot. And so you go with somebody else or whatever, make that decision. Or So I'm, I'm just, I'm I don't want to say fascinated that you, it wasn't fishing people that you had the issue with. Right, right. Not really. I mean, there was one other female guide, because I don't know if you noticed, but down here, the Salty Girls Beach Shop, my face is all over the windows. And my son's face, yeah. Is there is there like devil horns on it? No, no. But it's only half there now, because we had put it up in a year late, within a year, I guess, the other female... Do I call her a guide? No, she's... Oh God, She's like, a manatee oh, tour oh, female like. operator, but she tries just, to guide and you just get bonus points for me. So she she actually went to the city, which is two doors down, and um, threatened them over and over and over, filed complaints about my face being all over the building. And you can't you can you won't miss it. It's, it's on the windows. It's by the octagon, the big or the um, big kraken. Do we have a sharpie? Octopus. Do we have a sharpie over here? So. Um, yeah, so she, it took her a year to finally get it, them to do something because they loved it. They said, this makes it look amazing. They look make our look downtown look amazing. And what it came down to is they were mad that I came up with this idea for marketing to put my face right downtown Crystal River without ever putting a billboard up. Same thing with my truck. My face is all over my truck. Nobody else, no other guide has their face, almost like a real estate agent. They well, don't have their face on their truck. Is your face on your truck? Do you think I want to put this face on that truck? <laughs> I mean, I don't want all the girls to want to fish with me. You know what I mean? But no, that's same smart. thing. Yeah. I get it. I, so in the army, I actually did psychological operations. It's called psyop. Oh, you've been you've been with me from the start. And um, that's why I feel people out and things like that before you know before I start cracking little pecker jokes. I want to make sure I'm not going to offend somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the tear earlier. It's okay. It's okay. Angel tears. Um, so, but it's all what I, I'm trained. I, I want to say I'm trained to kill people, but I never killed anybody in the military. So I'm actually trained to get people to do what I want them to do. And they actually call me the marketing genius here because when I started guiding, like I said, it wasn't a, oh, well, let me see how this works out. It wasn't a part-time hey, things are slow. No, it was straight on, like, balls to the wall. Like, all right, I guess, I am guess I'm going to be fishing from now until I decide to one day say I'm not doing it anymore. I, That's I how great you, it went. I think you have, I mean, or it's you, been. you had really good timing, no offense, but I really think that that's the mentality you have to have. If you dip your toe, I don't, I have people, I literally have, I would say four or five people a year, their parents, that are well off or right. smart with things come to say, hey, my kid is at this, Sometimes it's 16, sometimes it's 20-ish, and mm -hmm. say, why don't you explain to them why you have a finance degree or what, you know, and a lot of times I don't give the parent the answer that they want with a kid, but I'm like, this is what you, you've got to be able to do it, but you've got to jump in. You can't half-ass, you know? Right. Like I always say, this That's is, with anything. Ma maybe this is a good one for you when people go, well, what about this person? They charge this, or hey, this person, does. and I'm like, do you want to hire a part-time dentist? I don't want anybody drilling my teeth that did it once a month. <laughs> and it's the same thing with fishing. When right. somebody does it, you know, no offense to them, but it's just, that's not probably the first person. Or again, we get all the time, like, what do you mean you're not available on Saturday? I'm like, we just had a call just a, like 24 hours ago. So what do you mean you're not available in 30 hours notice? Right. You had to book that a year ago, dude. Yeah. Or more. So, and well, I, there's other people that are, and I'm like, well, there's probably a reason for that. 
there's probably a reason for that. Right. But. I say the same thing to them. I like the dentist analogy. I might have to borrow that. Yeah, I borrowed it from somebody too. So it's just <laughs> there's no extra charge for that. So give me another like. I mean, because I feel like you've had enough time on the water here. Some hor- even if they don't involve you, because a lot of my crazy stories are actually watching other people. We've talked about them on the podcast before. Of other, almost a bystander with fishing. Mm. You know, like boat ramps. What in the hell goes through people's minds at the boat launches is, is beyond me. Just when we were here eating, I don't know, what, two days ago or something? Mm-hmm. And we were like, uh. Oh, yeah. This is, this is the time of the year where you go sit at the boat ramp in Crystal River and watch people. Definitely. Because they're just, they're, they're not, um, they pull out their Lund. <laughs> that they use once a year. <laughs> that, that, all you northerners, that's a knock from Southern Salty over here, okay? <laughs> Our carpeted boats aren't good enough. <laughs> there are a few out there. I don't know. I feel like riding in a Lund out there, especially how bumpy it was today, that would be comfortable. I feel like you'd get... Well, I, in fairness, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to supersede you on this one. In those boats, they're way better riding boats. Oh. Because, but... But the thing is, is when I see these people bring them down here, it's like, do you own it? don't buy that from Uncle Bob because the carpet or there's, like your boat is, oh, like you said, it's open. Yeah. You can rinse it down. You can get access to everything. Those people here that come down even one time, they get their wires and they get water, salt water in places. They never get it rinsed. And right. they have corrosion that they can never access. Yikes. That salt in the carpet, you never get it out. And yeah. that, that boat is almost trashed after a day or two here because they're, your boat is built for this right. and ours are not. But right. truthfully, like, I mean, I have full suspension seats in my boat, air ride. Oh, very with an nice. an actuator. I need that. <sighs> Smooth moves. Well, I can Whoa. get you. Yeah. I like that. With uh, 15 foot talons. <laughs> 15 foot talons, yeah. She, she, we were, she had a brand X, let's call it, and we were bottoming out, fellas. And guess what? Talons, I was like, yeah, my boats can go in 15 foot. You know, I like, like that. And it's and they're vertical too, so you don't have to fight the fish around them as much. But and right. they, they do tilt down, by the way. Very nice. Yeah, and Very I put nice. my navelite on them. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, but you know, so what? I'm trying to think of something funny that or crazy that I've seen, but it's, I it's normal. You know, I guess maybe it's so normal. I see the craziest things that I just don't think twice about it. Well, one thing I'm trying to figure out is uh, totally off topic because it's what we kind of do here is uh like again we've been pretty fortunate i say we like my business and, mm-hmm. and my guys but we've definitely seen a higher uh rise in cancellations and i'm seeing on facebook just like you said kind of stalking even though some of these guys i've known for 20 years or mm-hmm. you know, work events or mutual sponsor things and they're like just had a cancellation first second eight, ninth 12th 24 26 28 and these are guys that i actually know were booked or right. a lot of people put that up there they, yes. they never were booked right flyers but Ego, there's ego, and I, I mm-hmm. get that whole thing. But the cancellations, like, again, mentality thing, people, world thing, maybe mm-hmm. dollars are tightening up. Are you seeing some of that stuff? So I don't really get cancellations. Again, I'm not, you know, my business isn't based on travel and tourism and that kind of thing, except for July 1st to about August 15th. That's it. So the rest of the year, um, my people live here, or my northern, my snowbirds, um, come down and so I'm not I don't I don't even take deposits because I don't get cancellations I promise you they're oh in my. like you said well after you do so many days in a row when if I do get a cancellation I do one of two things number one I either sleep until 6 a.m. and the sun's not shining and I'm kind of happy um, or I get up and I go fishing I don't get to fish because today I didn't get to fish, right? Majority of the time I've got three, four people on my boat and I don't really get to fish. A lot of it is because I know I'm gonna be the one catching fish and then I'm gonna feel bad that the people on my boat didn't catch the fish, I caught them. So I will go out and fish or what I'll do is I'll scout. I'll go find new areas. So then let's say one area is kind of slowed down a little bit. Well, or or somebody found it. Somebody else is fishing it now. So now I have to go find a whole new area that's holding fish. So that's what I do. Um, but as far as cancellations go, not not really, no. I, I'm with you on, on the scouting and all that, because even though we're thousands of miles apart, different species, different right. water, same same thing. Oh, yeah. Cancellations, though, and, and hmm. deposits, like, 
it's getting crazy with people. Again, we're, we've been very fortunate, but even people we've had under our you know Interesting. book for 20 years now, all of a sudden. Well, it is an election year, too. Somebody was saying, so this will technically be, because it, I came right in kind of, I guess, the beginning of 2020. So I won't, you know, I can't say, hey, this is how that election year up to that was. was. So it's hard to say. Um, but everybody that I speak to, there are a lot of guides that have slowed down. Yes. Actually, there's a lot of guides who have changed jobs. They're, they're getting full-time jobs now. And these were, these are good guides, guides that I would A, book my family with, because you know I'm picky, and then um, B, I would recommend to people too, and they're now getting full-time jobs. I think because the amount of people, guides that are popping up doesn't help that, price because cutters. of course price cutters, right, um, but also because of the regulations, the fishing regulations here, um, they're getting sh harder and harder. So, um, and then again, inflation, I mean, the way that buying groceries and so for actually, I think for Florida, it's an insurance thing because we just had that major hurricane lap. We had two major hurricanes and one of them hit here. And so like even this place, this room probably had water. Actually, this room had water in it. So you got to think, yeah, and so that all of our insurance, homeowners insurance, car insurance are raising so fast, so rapidly. Let's say you have a $400 increase a month on your insurance. Well, that's what you used to go fishing with. That's who you used to pay a guide with, right? Or 600 or whatever it might be. But that was your family's vacation or hobby. Right. And so I feel like that has something to do with it also for us down here anyway. But I can't say I'm slowing down. I, I, I don't, I haven't noticed yet. I, 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 so. I, in our neck of the woods, again, not speaking for everybody just like mm -hmm. you can, I think a lot of the traditional guys and, and good people still have that. Maybe there's a little bit here and there and right. you, don't, you don't know what you don't know as far as people that maybe don't go or you know, say somebody goes two days, used to go three or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think things are definitely changing regardless of where you're at. But I see the same thing where I know, again, people don't take what we do as seriously or as a job, and I'm not here to, to defend that or it's not going to change anybody's opinion. But right. I see it because I care so much about fishing mm -hmm. that there are, I, I would say almost my age bracket and older, there's a lot of the guys, to your point, that are either going into another field right, or they're just, they're, they've done it for so long, maybe they're 60, 70, which is like 100 in guide terms, and they're... Like we're out, peace yeah. out. We're re we did really well. We're retiring, or we mm -hmm. can't take your know, bodies falling apart, knee replacements, or whatever it may be, because it is physical. Oh, it's absolutely physical. It's definitely. I mean, it's especially scalloping. Tomorrow I have the two trips. I have you guys, and I have an afternoon trip. So that's eight hours. I'll be more than likely be swimming tomorrow. So when I get done tomorrow evening, I'll go home and I'll take a shower and I will just lay down and I'll eat and then I'll just pass out. I know probably. people always when they're like. Well, you got you got home at like one o'clock. Like, what do you do all day? And I'm like, well, we left the house at four. I've been up and since then four had, thirty. Yeah, we had to clean everything. Like, again, not to whine on that whole thing, but I, I, getting back to the point is, I personally feel like right now, I have no issues paying for a guide. I mm -hmm. do all the time, even though this is what we do, just for our fun stuff as we travel around. Because I think it's so hard to get someone, if nothing else, that can teach you. And this is what I'm talking to the people here, right? That can teach you about the area. Even like I think a good guide like me, I almost I give history War of 1812 and I show them where we beat the British's ass and you know on Lake Erie and all, and I think that's part of the responsibility right. of a guide. And some people don't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. Some you'd be surprised, you know, if you kind of just, like you know like you said you got that psychological warfare shit going on. God, and and you sneak that in there. But I I'm really discouraged with the younger generation in general, but even about my age or less that we like plumbers or electricians same thing mm -hmm. there's not that new class coming in because you can't be a good guide in a year or two right i mean i again right even i, I would imagine you would say like you're if we have this conversation and i hope we do in 10 years right that you're going to look back and be like man i felt confident when i talked to you you know yeah. my year four that we were doing our thing but because i'm going to tell you it's me and i've got a lot more years doing it than you do that i'd be like i literally look back 15 years ago mm -hmm. and I was winning a lot of tournaments that's why I mean probably at the peak of my career as far as what people would be considered right and I'd be like I didn't know shit yeah 
Oh, I think about that a year ago. I'm like, wow, I've learned so much in the last year. But if you don't realize that, I think you're even, again, this is a plumber, electrician, whatever it is you do. Right. If you don't realize that, then you're probably not learning what you should be because we all are even right. if it's what not to do I, a lot of times you go pe fishing with people like we last year when we were here I learned I confirmed what not to do and it made me a better guide watching another guide as crazy as sounds because I was right. like now I'm seeing this from the other perspective and I'm like now I know I can't do this or one of my guys that we, we can't right you know what I mean sometimes Absolutely. you don't you don't learn what to do but you learn what not to do yep so would you leave us with one thing the Katie Joe special because we are getting ready to go eat Katie Joe special tacos at some restaurant. I have no idea, but the secret sauce. We're we're eating our catch, which is so touristy. I never do this shit, but we're doing it because you said so. You're gonna love it. Everybody said so, but so leave me with something. Rather, it's a awesome tip. We can edit this down because I know you're gonna stare at the camera for ten seconds. It's fine. Just everybody does it, Katie Joe. It's no problem. Jeopardy music. Yeah, it's like Jeopardy okay. music come rolling in here, or something again that would help us. You know. I look at this like it was we, when we booked this trip and asking questions and stuff, and I don't think we even did a good enough job of that because I kind of just let the rest of them handle it. But, you know, what are those things that you'd wish clients were better informed with maybe, you know, after, let's say, they fish with you for two days that mm -hmm. they, they wish they would have known? Does that make sense? Prior to fishing with me, you yeah. mean? But maybe you didn't do a good enough job giving them info, or maybe they didn't ask the questions, they didn't know what they didn't know, or maybe they're really, really green because they haven't been on a guide trip. Right. So, I mean, there's actually a lot, I guess. <laughs> we, we have, Number we have one, um, a lot of the times, it's going to be dependent on the time of the year, but what you actually want to catch or what you're trying to accomplish when you're going fishing. For example, some people want to go catch fish to eat, so they are gung-ho on everything they catch they want to eat. On the other hand, you have people who um, just want to catch. So they're happy with catching anything, eating or not eating. And then we have people like Mr. Ross over here who wants to catch trophy fish. And that was one thing. <laughs> I mean, you caught almost a trophy flounder, but almost. <laughs> I... So knowing kind of, I guess, you know, if you can be a little more specific on what you're trying to catch Ver, or what you're trying to accomplish on the fishing trip. That's usually probably well, and for me, a good thing. In fairness, this is, this is family and buddies trip. This is not Ross's shooting a show or this is not me <laughs> right. trying to chuckle plus. This was a, I was told, I was told by <laughs> everyone, we're having fun. You're having fun. We're having fun here, Katie. <laughs> Katie Joe, we're having fun. Don't get serious. Because again, the, we even joked about this. Right. Like when I, fishing is my livelihood. One of my really good friends in the hunting industry, people were at an event and they said, man, you're awful serious about this hunting thing. He says, this is how I feed my family. And fishing is the same way for me. And, yeah. and I think it's like that, again, Michael Jordan analogy of like, you don't tell Michael Jordan just to have fun on one-on-one -on -one game. Like he, <laughs> he can't do it, right? And, yeah. and, and I would bet that you sometimes, if you're going out with uh, your significant other or a friend, or something that like they sometimes like we're, we're having fun here Katie right or no right we're having fun no are you better at it than me I, I don't know it's always competition so it's that's always involved are you want to have like, a I don't know can you have about? fun and be oh. <laughs> 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 oh, that was it that was psychological evil laugh just for you guys that have been paying attention this whole time but um, yeah, I, I probably am guilty of not just always just having fun. I don't, I don't know, especially when it comes to fishing. I, but I, I don't really eat fish, so for me, I can go catch those yellow jacks all day long and not catch anything else except for yellow jacks and be just happy, just fine. They fight so hard. They do fight, and they're like, Ugh. they vibrate. Could you, do, could, you do that, could you do that again? We don't have a good budget for uh, sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> just one more time. Just. Ugh. Oh, yeah, Your hogfish do the same thing. It's like, Ooh. oh, I had this one lady. Okay, real quick. I had this one lady. She had never caught a fish in her life. She's been fishing, but never caught a fish. And so she, I don't, I don't know why. I try to teach, but sometimes they don't listen. She's holding the rod like this, and one of those jacks like just she's started. She's got a microphone. Sure. <laughs> 
that, you might, you, might, you guys it? that are watching this on Spotify or Stitcher or Google or something, you might want to watch the it's video of this two one. hands on the rod. That's got aggressive. With the though. fish going, and she, it's like she's shooting a 50 cow. Ooh, that's what Jack's do to her. It, oh, it, it was the best thing. And I promise you that was, she's coming back. Like she already booked her three more trips because she just absolutely loved catching the Jack balls. That's all she wanted. She didn't care about anything else. Yeah, they don't. You know? yeah. I, I think sometimes, and I've learned that again in fishing with my buddy Country Steve in Louisiana, where we were catching, I, I don't know the weight of them, but I would guess 15 to maybe pushing 20 pounds. I mean, these were mm -hmm. huge. I mean, oh, yeah. They were just, the fork tail was yay big. And the guy we were fishing with was absolutely having a seizure heart attack on, this, and I'm like, Dude, this is a hoot. He's like, oh, they right. taste like... I said, it, we're throwing them all back anyhow. We're catching release everything we get. I don't care. These things are... And they look cool. Right. It was like a cartoon because they're coming through that crystal clean water and they were shooting all over and there was mm -hmm. like schools of them. There was like, well, half a dozen or so right. we, that we could see. Right. And oh my God, they were flexing the rod, the guides right off our NRX rods. I just think those are the coolest fish. Oops. Most underrated fish are on the ocean, I think, because nobody wants to catch them, but they are fun to catch. So we're gonna, we've are gonna. we learned many things today. We've learned that there also is going to maybe be a part two of this video of a Katie Jo Ross um, ginger versus southern salty um, scallop championship. Um, I just I just want to let you know that this is that's very competitive. Very competitive. <laughs> I do this every day. Eight hours a day. I mean, have you ever seen... And I'm younger, so I can see better. Ooh. Are you, though? Yes. Have you seen... Have you, I'm 21. Have you have you seen? I'm just, I'm a natural at things. Okay, trophy scallop. <laughs> that's what you're going for. <laughs> Can't thank you enough for giving us your time because obviously you have been on the water. We were on the water with her today. So Katie, Joe, if you guys want to fish with her, where do we look you up? You can look up my website. Let's let's throw it. www.fishcrystalriverflorida.com, all spelled out. Um, you can check me out on Facebook. Captain Katie Jo, K-A-T-I-E-J-O. Do you have an Instagram? I do. I have an Instagram, Captain Katie Jo. Same thing. I think that's about it. That's If you can't Website. find her there, you just, or look us up. You can up give me and, a call. And we'll, we'll forward, <laughs> yeah, we'll forward you in a little bit. Lots of different things. That's the kind of cool thing about Crystal River. You guys can fish in some in some weather stuff because you kind of have some isolated areas here, which is kind of neat, right? Yeah, I remember. I mean, there was raining out there for a little bit, and we kind of dodged that one, and... Um, that's what's really, really cool about here, though, is you can, it can be raining to the north and you can fish to the south. It can be raining to the south, you can fish to the north. Um, I don't typically cancel. I mean, we, it's just the way, I guess it's Florida, and if it does rain, it rains for about 10, 15 minutes and then goes on, so. Katie Joe, can't thank you enough for your time. Make sure you check us out at bigwaterfishing.com or on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and all those good things. If you can't find this podcast on Spotify or the other 25 different download things, go on our website and we've got those links for you. But if you still can't find it, you definitely suck at catching fish and you should probably not listen to this anymore. I'm just kidding. My producer's giving a scowl. They might edit that out, but I'll probably veto it. <laughs>